Redshift section, where we'll take an overview of Amazon Redshift. Amazon Redshift is a fast, fully managed, petabyte scale data warehouse that makes it simple and cost effective to analyze all your data using your existing business intelligent tools. Redshift is a great choice if your database is overloaded due to OLAP transactions. As mentioned earlier, Amazon Redshift is designed for OLAP, which allows you to easily combine multiple complex queries to provide answers. Relational or SQL databases are row-based. However, Redshift is a column-based database. So if you look at this diagram, at the top is a table with, as you would see it in an Excel spreadsheet. So you have country, product, and sales, and then all the different rows. And then a relational database would store this as row one would be country is India, product is chocolate, sales is 1000. However, in column-based databases, it's done differently. So all the countries would be stored together. So you'd have India, India, Germany, and US stored. Then you store the products, then you store the sales. And this is a key difference between row store and column store databases. This means that columnar data is stored sequentially on the storage. So it requires less reads to get all the data. And it also allows you to compress your data. Columnar data can be pressed much easier as all the data types are the same because we had country all stored in one sequential row. So it's much easier to compress. In row based, all the data types would be different. So compression is much harder. The compression scheme for Redshift is automatically chosen for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. An Amazon Redshift data warehouse is a collection of computing resources called nodes. And these nodes are organized into a group called a cluster. And each cluster runs an Amazon Redshift engine that contains one or more databases. When you first launch Amazon Redshift, you can start with a single node to 160 gigabytes in size. Then as you grow, you can add additional nodes to take advantage of massive parallel processing. And you can then operate in multi-mode and what this means is you have a leader node, which manages all the client connections, and then the compute nodes. These store data and perform queries and computations, and you can have up to 128 compute nodes. One of the limitations of DynamoDB is that it's not highly available, as it's only available in one availability zone. The reason for this is that management business intelligence is not viewed as business critical. It's something that would be brought up very quickly, but there would be other applications needed to be brought up first. You can, however, restore snapshots of your Redshift databases to other availability zones. Let's take a look at the costs associated with Redshift. Firstly, you're charged for the number of compute node hours that you use, and that doesn't include the leader node. The leader node is not a chargeable node. Also, you're charged for the backups that you store, and also any data transfers within your VPC. You're not charged for any transfers outside of the VPC. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.